Let's jump higher than ever before and add an advanced block to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in Intelligent once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom advanced block to Minecraft. So very similar to how the item work, the advanced item, we're now making a advanced block with a custom block class. So let's just start by right clicking the block package, new package, and this is going to be called custom once again. And then instead of there, right click new Java class called the jumpy block. So this block is going to give us the jump boost effect when we actually walk over it. So this will extend the block class over here, making sure we choose net micro world level block, very important. Then we'll hover over this create constructor matching super. And once again, if the name of this particular parameter annoys you, just click on it, press shift F6 and choose properties. And then we're going to be fine. Same thing we did with the item. We're going to middle mouse button click on the block class. And now we have access to all the different methods that we might be able to overwrite in a custom block class. And you can see there are loads of them. So not all of them can be overridden and not all of them make sense to actually overwrite, but there is a lot of them that actually do make a lot of sense. And then we also have the iForge block where even more methods can be overridden. So I just highly recommend going through this, seeing what the methods do, especially the ones in the iForge block interface over here. We have some Java doc as well, and you can basically understand what all of this does. So let's then go back and what are we going to do with our block? Well, what we want to do is we want to apply a certain effect to an entity if we step on this. So for this, we actually overwrite the step on method. You can see, there you go. I'm already typing this out. And if I then press the tab key to autocomplete this, it generates all of this for us. So what we first of all want to do once again is change the names of the parameters. Now, don't just go in here and type because then you're going to get errors. That not, that's not what we want. We want to refactor this. So once again, click on the name of the parameter, Shift F6, and then usually it suggests a good name for us one way or the other. So I'm just going to go through here and change all of them to the different names. And there you go. A great setup and everything, all of the parameters are named. Now, the first thing we need to do is we actually want to check whether or not the entity that has stepped on this block is a a living entity because we can only add an effect to a living entity. So what we want to say is we want to say if entity instance of living entity, this one right here, and then we're going to say living entity, and then we're going to create the if statement. So this basically just checks whether or not the entity that is passed in here is actually a living entity. So if it could be cast into this, and then we're immediately sort of inline casting it, and then we can use the living entity over here to use the add effect method. And we can then say, a new mob effect instance mob effects dot and then we're just going to choose the jump one for 20 ticks so this would actually be one second how about we do a little bit more let's say 10 seconds that that's going to be fine as well and that's actually all that we need to do in this case now i want to add one more thing here and that is going to be the use method now what you will find is that you can see there's a strike through through this and if i actually add this the strike through continues and let's just format this a little bit differently now this particular method is called when you right click this block in the world and what we actually want to do i'm just going to print something out when we actually right click this so nothing crazy going on here but it's just something th so that you've seen the use method once at least now once again i will actually go through and change the names over here because my god do the parameter names annoy me if we don't have parchment uh, actually available but that's going to be fine there you go and then i literally just i'm not even checking for anything i'm just going to play say player dot send system message with component dot literal and i'm just going to say right clicked this that's all i'm going to do and then you will actually see one very interesting thing about this use method that you can probably then also puzzle together for yourself and this is the moment where i remind you highly recommend some java knowledge as well i will link once again the java introduction in the top right corner if you don't have this otherwise some of this might be very confusing to you highly recommend it it will help you immensely in the future and going forward with this tutorial series so get some java knowledge into you and then i promise you your mods of your dreams are only a few steps away after that. Right, once again, this is gray, meaning that this class has not been used. So if we now go into our mod blocks class and we're creating a new block here, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy over the Sircon block. We're going to call this the, of course, the jumpy underscore block, and then also changing the name over here to jumpy underscore block. 
Now, once again, I want to remind you, this is gray, meaning that we've not used this class yet because we're not creating a new jumpy block here, but we're creating a new block here. So what we need to do is we need to change this to new jumpy block, and that is it. Now, if you go back into our custom class, you can see the name here turned white and the constructor turned yellow. This means that this class is being used, and that is, of course, exactly what we want. Now we just need to add the JSON files. Now I will be copying all of those over because those are fairly standard. They are the normal JSON files that you've seen in the block tutorial as well. So you can see it's just pointing here to a block model. Then here in the translation, once again, this is just the jumpy underscore block. And then same here, just jumpy block over here as well. There you go. When it comes to the block model, same thing, just points to one particular texture. The item model just points back to the block model and then the texture here as well. Those will, those of course, all of this will be available to you as always in the description below, get our repository and individual gist as well. And now we can actually take a look in game and see if our jumpy block does what we want it to. All right, so we find ourselves back in Minecraft again, and there we go, we have the jumpy block available. So there we can see, we can actually set it down and everything working fine. And now the question is, if we go onto it, there we go, we get the jump boost effect and we can jump higher than ever before, just like I said in the intro. Now you, you can of course also right click this block. So this is gonna be very interesting indeed because it will reveal a very interesting thing about the use method. So if I right click this, you can see we're actually getting this four times. No, I didn't can keep clicking, sort of I can keep pressing down, but you should get this four times. Now only make this happen once. So let's see, I can't do it if I, tap the right mouse button, it still goes three times. Let's take another look at the code to see why that is the case. The reason is because the use method is actually called four times. It is called twice on the server and twice on the client. So the thing goes like this. It is called on the server once for the main hand and for the off hand. And then it's also called twice on the client, also once for the main hand and once for the off hand. And hence why this is being called four times. So if you want only one of those times to actually register, you can just use if statements, checking whether or not the level is client or whether or not the hand here that's being used is main or offhand. Highly recommend trying this out as well. And then you can see for yourself. Right, but that will be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.